What is going on, everyone? James Hancock here. I'm back to review the new movie, Another Round, starring Mads Mikkelsen, which gets its VOD release in the U.S. this Friday. It's been playing in limited release the last few weeks, as well as festivals throughout the year. And I've been hearing for a while from some reliable sources like Marcus Penn over at Penland Empire that this was a movie to keep an eye out for. Well, it is my great pleasure to confirm that this movie is absolutely incredible. A strong contender from a favorite movie of 2020, which admittedly is a bit of a weird compliment given how disrupted the entire movie industry has been this year. Nonetheless, if you're a movie lover and you miss watching great new movies, definitely consider taking a look at another round this Friday. And on that note, and given the theme of what this film's all about, I'm going to go ahead and take a small nip just to make sure that I got my, uh, my courage up for this review of this remarkable movie. Mm -mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. It's like Popeye taking his spinach. I need my vitamins. At any rate, this film was directed by Thomas Vennerberg, a Danish filmmaker where every time I watch one of his movies, I tell myself that I'm going to watch a lot more of his work. The other two films of his that I've seen are The Celebration from 1998 and The Hunt from 2012, which happens to be yet another collaboration between Thomas Vennerberg and Mads Mikkelsen. And I was absolutely floored by both movies. They're grim experiences, but just awe-inspiring. The Hunt just keeps getting better in my eyes. In particular, its brilliant portrayal of how quickly and easily people can get sucked into these self-righteous witch hunts based on the flimsiest excuse imaginable. But Another Round is completely different from those earlier films. This film is a celebration of life and easily the most joyful movie watching experience I've had all year. And that's not to say that it's some stupid broad comedy or sugary sweet musical. This film has its fair share of sadness and melancholy, but the ending is so uplifting and so well earned that it makes you just want to jump up, take a swig of your favorite hooch, and just start dancing around. Booze is certainly at the heart of the story. The premise is pretty straightforward. Four old friends, all of whom teach at a local school, they're all in their own ways kind of stuck in a middle-aged rut. To varying degrees, they're uninvested in their work, they're growing distant from their families. Basically, they're seeing all the early warning signs of becoming old before their time. So they decide to conduct a little experiment based on a theory by psychiatrist Finn Skarderud, if I'm saying that correctly. And Finn Skarderud put forth the idea that human beings are naturally a little low in their blood alcohol content, and that by maintaining a blood alcohol content of 0.05%, one will feel more confident, relaxed, creative, you name it. The goal is basically to sustain what you feel like after one or two glasses of wine. Buzzed, but not drunk. And to make the experiment official, the four men agree only to drink during working hours. In the experiment, it's a roaring success for all of them. Suddenly, they're the best they've ever been when it comes to inspiring their students. And there are scenes bordering on total euphoria as we see the impact they're having on their students, both in the classroom as well as on the athletic field. And as their students start to overcome certain obstacles and hurdles, you get these emotional payoffs that just had me howling and cheering. So of course, with everything going so well, naturally they decide to up the ante, taking the experiment to 0.1%, and that's when the results start to become a little bit more mixed. They still enjoy many of the benefits of alcohol. However, they also get to enjoy many of the destructive side effects of alcohol, leading to some of the funniest drunken benders that I've ever seen on film. Now, before I go any further, I should add some information that I learned from Wikipedia. Thomas Vinterberg originally wrote this story as a play, and then he supplemented it with details about Danish drinking culture, which he learned from his daughter, Ida. Or maybe it's Ida. I'm not quite sure on the pronunciation. In any case, Vinterberg's daughter was originally cast to play the daughter of Martin, the central character played by Mads Mikkelsen. But then four days into filming, she was killed in a car accident. So with the help of Tobias Lindholm, who took over directing for a week, Thomas Vandenberg was able to continue with the film, which is dedicated to his daughter. But in the aftermath of this tragedy, Vandenberg decided to change the focus of the film somewhat. Originally, the film was merely a celebration of alcohol based on the thesis the world history would have been different without alcohol. And quick side note, that idea does get explored in fascinating ways by some of Martin's brilliant semi-drunken history lessons about high-functioning alcoholics like Winston Churchill. But in addition to these kinds of scenes, Vandenberg rewrote the script stating, it should not just be about drinking, it was about being awakened to life. Now, I can't imagine what it must have been like for Vandenberg to continue with this film after suffering that personal tragedy, but there's no denying the power of the final product. The final scenes of this film are some of the most life-affirming moments that I can remember seeing in years, all the more so due to the personal losses experienced by the characters prior to the film's conclusion. There's one shot in the movie about two-thirds of the way through it that's so sad it's going to make me misty if I even talk about it, so moving on. It's worth pointing out that if this movie had been made in Hollywood, it probably would have collapsed under the burden of some stupid preachy message trying to teach us some nauseatingly self-important lesson. 
and there's certainly lessons and ideas that can be inferred from this movie, but Thomas Vandenberg, he's an artist, and he trusts his audience to form their own conclusions based on what happens to the characters. Now, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone planning to watch it. I'm not even sure if the concept of spoilers is even relevant when discussing art house films, but I'll simply close by saying that Another Round made me laugh harder than any other movie all year, repeatedly, and along the way, it took me places emotionally that I found to be incredibly moving and thought-provoking. And Mads Mikkelsen, he continues to impress me more and more with his ability to juggle a appearing in giant franchises like Marvel or Star Wars or Harry Potter, while at the same time collaborating with brilliant directors like Thomas Vinterberg on much more personal projects. In the final scene of the movie, Mads Mikkelsen enjoys what might be his finest moment on screen throughout his entire amazing career, where in spite of being well into his 50s, he just goes berserk with one of my favorite dance sequences that I've ever seen. It's one of those moments that will leave you cheering and wanting to watch the movie all over again then and there. Because in the end, this is a movie about rediscovering the joy of being alive, and I can't wait to sink my teeth into more of Vinterberg's work now that I've had this gentle reminder of what an amazing storyteller he is. So just a reminder, Another Round comes out on VOD in the United States on Friday, December 18th. I strongly recommend the movie, but I do need to go ahead and wrap up this video because I got a surprise visit by my family. It's their first visit to New York during this crazy year. And to make their visit even more unpredictable, we're about to experience what everybody's anticipating is going to be this giant blizzard. So I kind of need to bounce. But if you enjoyed this review, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, hitting that notification bell. And if you want to talk more about Thomas Vinterberg or Mads Mikkelsen or alcohol or whatever, give me a shout out on Twitter at Colbrax. But I can't thank you enough for watching the video. I really appreciate it. But more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.